Hey guys, this is Shainu. Today I'll be sharing with you my experience taking this ISYE6501 master class from Georgia Tech. If you're someone who's taking this course through EDX or Georgia Tech uh, itself, this is going to help you. I'm going to be sharing with you guys what really is that you're going to be learning in this course, along with some tips that I have acquired over the, over the past four months. I'm going to be sharing with you the syllabus, I'm going to be sharing with you the class structure, the content you will learn from the class, and give you some resources that's definitely going to help you. And at the end, I will tell you my overall experience and give you some hints on the exam preparation. All right, let's go ahead and talk about the syllabus. If you come to this website, which is going to be linked in the description below, you're going to have a syllabi uh, download option, which is a PDF. I'm going to open it up here and I'm just going to go straight into the grade section because I'm pretty sure the only thing you care about is the grade section and also most of the syllabus follow the same structure. You are not going to be able to copy and paste code from the internet. You're not going to be able to threaten anybody, things like that. You already know that stuff. So I'm not going to be, you know, wasting your time with it. But I'm going to just give you the grading and how that whole grading structure is going to work uh, for this program. Weirdly, I'm not able to find it, but it's fine. I'll just share with you because obviously I already know it. So in this course, you will have homework, you will have exams, and you will have extra credit. And at the end, you will also have a course project. Let me talk about the homework first. The homework is going to be primarily on what you have learned during that week uh, of videos that you're going to watch. And in the homework, you're going to be coding in a language called R. And don't freak out if you're someone who doesn't have that background in coding, uh, you know, attend those office hours because it's going to help you a lot. They're going to literally hold your hand, give you almost all the code, and the rest would be something for you to figure it out on your own. And these office hours are going to be two times a week, Monday and Thursday. Your homework is due on Wednesday night. Uh, so Monday is the only day that really matters because on Thursday they're going to just you know, kind of give you a review over the homework and also, um, if they have time, give you a sneak peek on next week homework. So you can, you know, have a gem start over the weekend. The next thing is the, the exam itself. Exam is, there are three exams in this course. Midterm one, midterm two, and a final exam. Each of which weighs 25 percentage. So 75 percent of this course is just exams. And honestly, exams are the hardest part on this course because they really, really trick you. If you know anything about Georgia Tech, you know they're notorious for tricking their students. And I, I, I honestly, I hated that uh, when I took the first midterm because the content that you're going to learn here is not like rocket science. It's going to make sense. And the way they put it, it's almost like they tell you like, hey, these are, this is an intro course. You don't really need to go, you know, dig deep. You don't need to understand all this stuff. But some of the prerequisites that you need, some basic understanding of linear algebra, statistics and probability is going to be a huge, huge, you know, thing in this course because they're going to use that a lot. And they're going to use a lot of terminologies that you probably will hear for the first time. I'm a computer scientist. I graduated in 2018. So... Stats is not a course that I had to take. I took all the engineering, you know, uh, math classes, but stat is not one of them. So without knowing all this information, when I jumped into the exam, it was really bad. My first exam score was really bad, and that really ruined my chance to get an A in the class. So I will tell you a lot more about the exams in a little bit because I feel like I'm jumping out of uh, the point, which is syllabus. And then there's going to be an extra credit. So like I mentioned, there's a homework, which is going to be 15 percentage. Your exams is going to be 75 percentage. And then you will have an extra credit, which is like a syllabus quiz. That's the easiest two percentage that you can get. And it's almost and it's it's something that everybody is going to get because you have to go through that syllabus quiz because that's how you set up the proctor track that is going to you know be used for the exams. These exams are proctored and they, you know, record your screen so you cannot obviously cheat in any way uh, because when you get caught, you are going to get expelled or they're going to, you know, send you to 
those weird things so they're gonna probably give you a strike or put you on probation i don't know so be very careful uh before you take the exam to know your stuff okay all right so that's syllabus so that's 100 percentage right there so you have again homework 15 percentage exams are 75 percentage and oh i almost missed then you also have a course project which is going to be a percentage of your grade and this course project is done individually you are going to apply everything that you have learned uh, on a business need uh, from uh, reading these success stories from IBM and different uh, you know websites like that at least until 2020 this is the grading system that they have homework is 15 percent exams is 75 percentage you have a two percentage uh, extra credit which is a syllabus exam like I mentioned and then you have an assignment at the end which is going to be a percentage all right next thing I'm going to be talking about is the class structure I already mentioned to you that you will have office hours that you can rely on for your homework so the class structure all these class lectures are going to be hosted in a website called edx and if you're someone who is just you know going through the edx micromasters program then uh, you know you are kind of smart honestly because you're only really paying 825 dollars for the same course that you're going to be paying a thousand three hundred dollar in joy tech because that's what i had to pay so all the class lectures and everything is going to be hosted in edx and if you don't know about edx just you know take a quick look in in google they're amazing i really love it because you have opportunities to take courses from a lot of different colleges at least the intro classes just to get an idea of how they teach their content and exams are all also going to be hosted in edx and if you're taking this program through edx all your discussions and all your homework and everything is going to be posted in edx if you're someone who is taking it through the zori tech program you will go to canva to get uh, to get your uh, uh, your homeworks and also uh, projects and everything else but the exams for both edx and zori tech students is going to be in edx so that's pretty much the class structure again they really trick you when they tell you this is an intro course because you really have to know the fundamentals of the the models that you're using to solve a problem and maybe i did i, I should go over what they're going to teach in this class and that can be found in this website which is going to be linked below you're going to be learning how to do prediction you're going to be learning how to do uh, classification um, you know you're going to be learning how to do like a lot of different awesome awesome technology that you probably wouldn't have heard of um, at least uh, you know if you're an analytics student I'm sure you have heard of it but being a computer science student as myself I have never heard of them and it, it was amazing there's I learned a lot really I learned a lot and all of this stuff was so interesting to me uh, but you have to really invest time in understanding when to use what model for what scenarios that's going to drive the grade in the exam that's going to give you the best grade in exams. If you understand the fundamentals of when to use when, you know, you will do an amazing job in the class. All right, uh, going into the office hours. So the office hours, at least in my class, was held in BlueJeans. Uh, it's, it's another Zoom-like website uh, where you can go and, you know, see them sharing your screen, sharing their screen, and then you can talk to them and interact with them in chat and all this other stuff. All right so again so the content that you're going to be learning is really uh, top-notch stuff but the whole structure of the course and the videos was kind of horrible i i feel like it was all over the place and you will understand that when you are going through this program it's just or uh, in this class i mean this is stuff all over the place it's not organized the way you want they're going to use terminologies that you will not hear until like three weeks from the day that you're watching the video so that really does mess with you and also mess up your whole educating your education or your 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 experience and again if you hear a word that you really don't understand you have to go to youtube and search for it now i'm going to be showing you a good good youtube channel that could help you a lot and this really helped me to understand the difference between like a lot of fundamentals in this class and that youtube channel is called uh, statquest um, you're going to hear a lot of people talk about this this guy is amazing uh, if you're watching his stuff for the first time it is kind of different <laughs> i don't want to say weird but it, it is kind of different but you will get used to it trust me you'll get used to it and he's he does an amazing job simplifying these models and it gives you a good understanding of when to use what all right 
what other resources should I show you? Okay, so there's a Slack for this class. I'm not sure for how long, but there's a Slack for this class, which can be found in their, in their Reddit website. So they also have a Reddit. And for their Reddit, I'm sure you already know about it. You just need to do uh, r slash OMSA. And here, if you go in their website, you will see the Slack links uh, listed somewhere here. Uh, so yeah, right here. So these are the Slack links. So you could use that to join the class early and talk to your peers and see how they feel about the classes if you wanna go through that route. So you have Reddit, you have Slack, and then there's the Piazza, which is uh, where the TAs are going to be. So in Slack, you're gonna have students and maybe one or two TAs, but majority of the TAs and even Joel and himself is going to be in Piazza. And Piazza is amazing in a sense that even though it's kind of like this discussion board, old school looking thing, um, people are very responsive there. They're very helpful. And if you don't understand something, post your question there. Do not be shy because I was shy in the beginning and uh, it, I, I regret that uh, because I did, like I mentioned, I, I didn't understand certain things in, in, in before I took the midterm one because I thought in my head, oh, this is going to be an intro class, going to be hard at all. And, you know, it really like just shattered my world. Uh, because I just, and if you're someone to look, who is an A student, straight A student, because I was in, in college, uh, you know, this <laughs> this class is really going to challenge you uh, to get the A that you need uh, in this course. So you have to invest a lot of time here. Um, if you're someone who is working full time, I would highly recommend just taking this one class by itself. And this is should be the first class you take uh, before everything else, because this gives you a good idea of this whole program itself. All right, so the exam preparation, like I mentioned, you just gotta go understand everything that you're learning, understand, I keep saying that, understand everything that you're reading, and then also read the lecture notes. And you can talk to a TA in Slack or Piazza to ask them for lecture notes, uh, or I'm, I'm sorry, lecture transcript is what I mean, lecture transcript, and reading through that stuff really helps you because Joel Sokol, Dr. Sokol, um, put a lot of these small little hidden things here and there you kind of don't hear it at first but reading it really you know emphasize as to why you should use certain things so read the transcript uh, you know and i would highly recommend reading the transcript right after you watch the videos uh, through edx and these videos that you have per week is going to be somewhere between 40 minutes to one hour long and you know, you might have two modules in one week. You might have just one in one week. Uh, so yeah, uh, that's everything. So as for exam preparation, again, guys, understand what you're learning. Understand it, really understand it, and you can do really good in your exams. Um, and okay, so for exams, they will let you uh, use the cheat sheet. And <laughs> um, if let me tell you this, if a, if a class is letting you use a cheat sheet, and cheat sheet is like a printing paper that can be used front and back, you can write all your notes out or whatever. If a class is letting you use a cheat sheet, you know exactly you know, it's not going to help because most of the time I created the cheat sheet, all it did is help me kind of go through this whole stuff all over again and write all, all of it down. And it did help me, of course, but in the exam, they're going to give you case scenarios. Like, what are you going to use in this scenario? What are you going to use in that scenario? Okay, what is this coefficient going to do when you get applied to this and that and this and that? So cheat sheet is not going to help be helpful but you can definitely use that for rule of thumb because you're going to have some rule of thumbs here and there that you can utilize to answer some questions you don't have to memorize the equations you don't have to memorize the code uh, the homework uh, for the exam that is you don't have to memorize the code for the exam uh, the only time you're going to code is in the homework and uh, that's it and even in the course project uh, you are only going to you know just talk you're just going to write a page or four or five pages of information as to what your approach would be to solve a issue that some of these businesses are having all right so this is almost uh 16 minutes long i don't want to i don't want to be longer than this hopefully you guys found this video helpful i really hope that you do an amazing job in the class um, again, pay attention to the class, uh, re-watch the lecture videos, watch it one time, bef right before the exam, I would highly recommend watching those lecture videos all over again. It really helps. And and yeah, that, that's all I have for you guys. Uh, all these links are gonna be posted in the description below and I will uh, talk to you guys soon. Have a good rest of the day and good luck with this class if you're planning to take it because you will need it. <laughs>